Apartment boys, apartment girls, let's give it up for the devil's personal nightmare, Blaine Martell! Welcome, all of you. We're going to be talking about a very important subject, and that is Satanism. In fact, the title of the program is Satanism Unmasked. We're going to be having Carmen again. We've got Sean Sellers, Bob Lars, a lot of guests, and a very special guest that's right behind me. Please welcome Mr. Excitement. Come on! Lee, how you doing, bud? Doing great. I've got a letter here that we just got in our ministry last week from a young man. His name is Lee, just like yours. He's from Kansas, and he says that he was involved in Satanism. In fact, him and a friend, he says, would go down to a river beating animals to death with boards and pipes. He says that they uh, asked demons to possess him, but they came to our camp this summer, completely renounced the Prince of Darkness and gave their lives to the Prince of Peace, Jesus Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah! Woo! But, listen to this. Listen to this. One of the things uh, that he said in here that got him involved in Satanism was heavy metal music. And I want you to give me these albums, Lee. Now, you're not into this kind of music, are you? No, I'm not. I'm a country and western fan. That's what I thought. <laughs> and uh, this guy here is King Diamond. King Diamond is a, a Satanist. He belongs to the Satanic Church and sings about Satanism in his music. Kids are listening to this stuff. We also have a group here called Metallica. Metallica sings in their, one of their latest songs, Master of Puppets. I'm pulling your strings, twisting your mind, smashing your dreams, blinded by me. You can't see a thing, just call my name because I'll hear you scream, Master, Master. I want you to know that Satan is using the media, things like rock music, Dungeons and Dragons, to influence young people into Satanism. And that's why we're doing this special edition of Fire by Night called Satanism Unmasked. We'll be right back. <laughs> A horse is a horse, of course, of course, and no one can talk to a horse, of course, that is, of course, unless the horse is demon-possessed. Praise God, what a beautiful day, and, and I've got a brand new horse, and hey, fella, what should I call you? How about Mr. Head, Wilbur? <laughs> uh, wait a minute, you're a horse, uh, of course you can't talk. And you can't whistle either. <laughs> now you cut that out. I don't like the tone in your voice. As a matter of fact, I don't like your voice. Something's amiss in the barnyard. <laughs> hey, what's this brand you've got back here? It, it, it looks like a pentagram. That's not a brand, Wilbur. That's a tattoo. I'm a manly sort of horse, of course. That's demonic, Mr. Head. So's your breath. And what have you got in your saddlebags? That's for me to know and for you to find out. And what is this? That's my horsescope. <laughs> and, and this? It's my new Guns and Horses CD. And look at this. Pimp Barn and Play Horse Magazines. Ooh, that one's got black beauty in it. Listen, I don't like having this stuff around. As for me and my barnyard, we're going to serve the Lord. What's this wee stuff, Wilbur? Okay, I think I know what to do. In the name that Brother Summerall preaches, leave him alone. <laughs> well, I guess it might have worked. Fooled ya, Brother Summerall I know and Jesus I know, but who are you? <laughs> I think I need to check this out. Let's see. What was that scripture reference? Mark chapter 16, I think. Oh, good. Here it is. These signs will follow them that believe. They shall cast out demons. Well, I believe. I believe, too, and I tremble. Who are you? They call me the Daily Double, for I am two. Two. Two demons in one. <laughs> well, 
You demon of bad humor and you demon of rebellion, in the name of Jesus, I command you to leave him. Now, are you going to let your yay be yay and your nay nay? Do you feel free? Well, are you going to mess around with the things of darkness anymore? I love you, Mr. Head. Mile High Stadium, Denver, Colorado. You say, why are we here? Well, we figured that Satan is the prince of the power of the air, so that puts him, oh, about a mile high. So that's where we're here. Actually, it's just a beautiful location. I think we're all becoming well aware of the incredible influence that Satanism is having in this country. But one of the questions we have is why are teenagers being caught up in such a dangerous and perverted thing like Satanism? I believe one of the reasons is because of the heavy metal satanic music that they're listening to. You know, Denver is also the home of one of the most controversial and well-known talk radio hosts in America. His name is Bob Larson. And Bob recently toured with the most popular satanic band in the world, Slayer. We uh, asked Bob what Slayer was like. The thing that surprised me the most was that the kids at the concerts were true believers in the aura of evil that the band presents. I mean, the kids were there with all kinds of satanic paraphernalia, every t-shirt, every black leather jacket, had the most grotesque representations of Satanism. But for the guys in the band, it was an act, it was a gimmick, it was simply a way to get the attention of people. In fact, the guys in the band told me, said point blank, seven years ago we were just another garage band in L.A. and we deliberately chose Satanism as a theme to get the attention of the public. And they were even surprised when I talked to them about kids who were Satanists as a result of Slayer's influence. They were amazed to think the kids would take them that seriously and go that far with it. To them, it was just hype, it was all an act, and they couldn't even relate to these kids out there who were involved in sacrificing animals and performing blood ceremonies. They were surprised to hear it. Even though they're not into Satanism, don't they feel responsible because of kids who are listening to their lyrics and in doing what their lyrics are saying, going out and uh, you know, committing sacrifices and hurting and destroying their own lives, don't they feel responsible for what they're doing? Absolutely none. They felt no responsibility whatsoever. To them, they're just entertainers. And of course, like most people, they put it back on the parents. Well, we know the parents have some fault to bear in this. But uh, the position they took was, these are kids who come to our concerts, they buy a ticket, we give them music, we're not responsible what they do before or afterwards. Rock and heavy metal are more than just music, they're an entire lifestyle. We're out here in the front of a rock and roll store here in Denver called Outer Limits, and this is where kids go to buy all the paraphernalia they need to look like their favorite rock bands. Let's go inside and check it out. All right, uh, we're here in Outer Limits, and I guess uh, you must be the owner here? Yes, I am. Okay, and what's your name? Kathy Taylor. All right, Kathy, I'm Blaine Bartell. Good to meet you. Uh, do you have a lot of teenagers coming in here? Yeah, we do. And what kind of things do they come in and buy? They come in by a lot of the local tapes, a lot of the clothes that we sell, patches, bootstraps, wristbands, that kind of thing. All right, so this is kind of where you create your rock and roll image. Yes, it is. How about band members? Do bands come in here? Yeah, that's mostly who we cater to as band members. Yeah, well, good. Uh, so this here, I guess this is where all the local bands are. And uh, let's see, this, I, I noticed this uh, Tuesday All Ages Night at Rock Island. What is Rock Island? It's a bar they just opened up for all ages. Who writes the lyrics for the, the band? Most of them. Okay. Well then, uh, did you write this one, Devil Without a Pop? I wrote half of it. Okay, let me just read the first part and I want you to comment on it. It says here, we're the official sound of Satan. He fills our songs full of hate and love and fun, king of evil number one. He is Lord Hyde Satan. We work for Satan. We're his henchmen, collect souls for him. We're the middlemen, all right? So come on now and prove you're a fan. Uh, on the dotted line, sign it in blood, man. The S, the A, the TAN. Satan is his name. Now, I want to ask you, though, guys, do you guys believe in Satan? I mean, do you really believe in it, or is it a big gimmick? He's cool. He's cool. Cool. 
Depends on your definition of what Satan is, I guess. Well, uh, let's say we define Satan as the ultimate evil, the one who's come to destroy the world, all that uh, kind of stuff. Uh, see, 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 Satan is not the ultimate evil. He's the one who comes to destroy the evil people. See, God, in, in my mind, is a because he's supposedly all powerful, but he can't, he doesn't do to these stupid Nazi And so then Satan, he takes these people and fries them up, you know. He's Eternal torment. Okay. So Satan's actually the good guy, and uh, old God up in heaven is the bad guy. Is that right? He, right. He's the good guy because he supports everything that humans want to do. God wants to shut off everything that humans want to do. So you see, he's oh, good. what kind of stuff does God want to shut off? Oh, uh, everything that he called sin and that Satan called natural human behavior. See, so it's just like sarcasm. I mean, if they're like real Satan worshippers, they like sacrifice chickens on the stage, and they don't do that. You know. You haven't seen that happen yet. No. I don't worship the devil. I don't worship anything. I just. You know, you can't preoccupy yourself with things like that. You know, you're just going to mess yourself up. I'm atheist, I guess you can say. I don't believe in God or hell or... It's just, you can't really take it seriously. But many teenagers are taking Satan very serious. Pete Rowland, senior class president at his high school in Carl Junction, Missouri, and his two friends, Jim Hardy and Ron Clements, are serving life sentences without parole for the brutal murder of their friend, Stephen Newberry. The four boys hiked a half a mile into the woods, tied a bagged kitten to a tree, taking turns hitting it like a pinata. Looking for something bigger to kill, they turned on Stephen, clubbing him over 70 times with baseball bats. They proudly proclaim Stephen as their latest sacrifice to Lord Satan. The killers, especially Pete Rowland, had become obsessed with heavy metal bands like Metallica. He took time to write the lyrics to all of his favorite tunes. There's something else controlling me. Death is in the air, he wrote. Strapped in the electric chair, this can't be happening to me. Who made your God to say, I'll take your life from you? Flash before my eyes, now it's time to die. Does today's heavy metal music help lure kids into the hideous elements of Satanism? Pete Rowland's family now thinks so, and experts agree. What we're finding is that many parents of our youth today were youth themselves back in the 60s and early 70s. And the, the, the acid rock movement back in those days uh, did not have the same uh, underlying satanical kinds of, of, of overtones to it. So many parents today are simply looking at what their teenagers are doing and saying, oh, that's so similar to what we did, we must be tolerant of it. It isn't the major moral failures that concern me in the lives of Christian kids, for example, as much as it is the little cutting of corners that may be there because they're not conscious of it, but a particular song or an artist's attitude just desensitize them slightly enough where they would not make the Christian decision or the biblical decision. You know, it stands to reason that if kids want to dress like their favorite bands, then they're going to want to act like them too. And I know that a lot of these bands say that they don't really believe what they're saying about Satanism or about these other things. But you know what? The young people that are watching them and listening to them do believe it. There's a scripture found in the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 7, in verse number 5. It says, It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. And the Bible describes a fool as someone who has said in their heart that there is no God. And these bands that are glorifying Satan and denying Jesus Christ by not only their lyrics, but by their lifestyle would definitely fall into that category. So without a doubt, rock and roll is contributing to the problem of Satanism in this country. But as the bands will tell you, you don't have to go down and buy their albums. You don't have to show up at their concerts. It's your decision what you listen to. You say, well, does what I listen to really affect the way I live and the things that I do? Absolutely. The Bible says in Proverbs, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. You will become what you think upon. You say, well, I like this styles of music. I like heavy metal. Well, guess what? There's good Christian bands out there that can uh, be the kind of bands that you like to listen to. People like Carmen and Petra and White Cross. Bands that are causing you and pointing you to imitate Jesus Christ. And for me, that's better than Warlock Pincher. Spotlight interview features Klein Taylor, who was 10 years old when his cousins introduced him to a game, Dungeons and Dragons. In the 8th grade, he started drinking and doing drugs, and it was during that time that he met a friend, Snake, who introduced him to Satanism. He joined a satanic group known as the Sons of Satan. The group had grown in size to nearly 1,500 people, some as young as 11 years old.
Like in D&D they have witchcraft and stuff like that, which is a part of Satanism too. I just took stuff from Dungeons and Dragons and used it as reality. I started liking the power, you know, to it that it gave me. As I was killing things, killing people, animals, the more I played Dungeons and Dragons and the more I got involved in Satanism, they both become just about the same to me. The more I had, you know, looked into the groups and, you know, listened to them, the more it, it fed my mind, like, you know, hey, suicide is the way, you know, partying, drugs, and everything, and I started doing drugs and stuff. Motley Crue's Shout the Devil tape uh, had a big influence on me. The song Shout the Devil, and the in the beginning part, Shout the Devil part, it said, uh, be strong, you know, destroy and shout at the devil. And then on the end of the beginning, it said, we shall rule the afterwards forever. So I just figured, you know, join Satan and, you know, you'd have the power, you'd, you'd be able to take over the whole world. In Satanism, people are looking at them like just street people or drug addicts or alcoholics, but there is, in our group, there was lawyers, nurses, doctors, and different, you know, they range from all kinds of backgrounds, you know, from rich to poor. There was breeders in our group, and what the females were for during the sexual rituals and other times where we had sex with them to have kids, and what the kids were used for is the human sacrifices. In our group, there was babies, and there was, they ranged from teenagers, babies, and older ones but more of it was the babies. If you refused to do something, they would, in our group, they would sacrifice you. In Satanism, the more rank you get, what they call rank in there, the more bloodthirsty you get and the more death-related you get. If you refused to do it, even though you knew it was wrong, and they asked you to do it, or told you to do it, that you would die. That was the only way to, you know, that was considered a sin for you not to obey them. To me, there is no way out besides Jesus Christ. I mean, you may be out as in not going to the meetings and stuff like that, but your mind and spirit's still in it, you know, unless you go through Jesus Christ. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States of America. Thank you, thank you. Got a very important message for you tonight. Satanism, it's all over, it's widespread. How widespread? Think Roseanne Barr. <laughs> <laughs> Satanists, we got Satanists running all over this country doing that Satanistic, ritualistic thing. It's not good, it's bad, it's bad. <laughs> Middle Eastern leaders over there in the Middle East saying that our country's of the devil. It's not true. Got Anton LaVey over here. Want me to be a Satanist? Not gonna do it. <laughs> Wouldn't be prudent at this juncture. <laughs> Want to clarify? America, not a Satanic country. In Satanism, they got the pentagram. Spam! In Washington, we got the pentagon. It's good. In Satanism, they got covens. Here in Washington, we convene. That's good. So, to summarize, Satanism, bad in the country, not my fault. <laughs> got some good news, got some bad news. Bad news is we have an enemy. It's not Gorby, not that insane Hussein guy over there wearing the turban on his head, them rags in the desert. No, it's not him. <laughs> it's not him. It's the devil. That's who it is. He's bad. But I've got good news. We got a book, the Bible. It's good. It's a good book. Yeah. And I want to say this. Devil, I know you're out there. And I want you to read my lips. Jesus is Lord. God bless you, America. We love you.
As you can see, I'm standing in front of Isis Bookstore here in Denver. Uh, it's a store that carries all kinds of magic and occult items, everything from how to conduct a, a witchcraft or ritual to coven meetings, books on everything you'd need, uh, crystals, astrology, tarot cards, everything for occult practices. And this lends to a lot of the fascination that young people have with Satanism and the occult. They're able to get their hands on books like I've got in my hand here. We got this in this bookstore. It's called The Satanic Bible by uh, Anton LaVey. Uh, uh, Satan Wants You, another one, uh, Necronomicon, which is a book that deals with uh, magic in the occult. Uh, they got the Ouija board in there, so there's just about everything in there. The only thing we couldn't find was Dungeons and Dragons, but uh, you could go down to any mall, find any one of your national chain bookstores and get that. Dungeons and Dragons is one of over 300 fantasy role-playing games on the market today. At least 4 million players have accepted the invitation to enter into the fantasy dream world of sorcery, swords, and demons. Well, actually, the figure by the National Coalition of Television Violence is documented uh, more than 125 cases of either suicide or murder directly attributable to Dungeons and Dragons. In Dungeons and Dragons, what you do is to create a fantasized universe of the mind in which expediency to achieve your goal is more important than any kind of moral frame of reference to your actions. And so, for some kids, generally the very intelligent and the very imaginative, when they do this, uh, some of them can slip over the edge. It's kind of like it's a training primer. It's, it's as they play the game, they are learning to function by all the rules that are wrong. D&D is morally deficient, it's spiritually corrupt, it is educationally evil, it teaches evil, and it is potentially dangerous. And um, the road to the ideals it represents leads to destruction. And that's the only place they lead. I should know. Movies have done their damage too. Mark Branch, a 19-year-old horror movie buff, stabbed Sharon Gregory to death. Branch, who later hung himself, was fascinated by the slasher Jason in Friday the 13th. Saying this, he wanted to see what it feels like to kill. Many of today's movies are no more than an introductory lesson to Satanism, witchcraft, and murder. These kids are getting the idea from somewhere. A teenager doesn't manufacture a desire to see blood or taste blood or to know what it's like to kill another human being. But if they've seen Jason do it, if they've seen Freddy Krueger do it, for that small percentage of people out there who may be borderline psychotic or who have serious drug problems, it can and in some cases does tip them over the over edge. The edge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, what happened? Are you okay? I came home. I was out with some friends, and I came home, and I found my parents in bed. It was shot. Shot? Well, who did it, man? Oh, check it out. Police escort. Whoa. Some big trouble. In your right hand. What's the charge? Two counts of murder. Your Honor, I find this man guilty. 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 Therefore, I hereby enter judgment that you, Peter Bradley Davis, be sentenced to death by lethal injection. Guilty. 
and ritualistic murder sentenced to death by lethal injection. There's no doubt about it. Connie, Bo or Peep, whatever his name was, he worships Satan. Little Bo Peep, the Satanist. Oh, no Satan. Little Bo Peep sacrificed his sheep and now he doesn't know where to find him. <laughs> Sorry. Mom, I still can't believe that anyone could kill their own parents. I mean, I've been real mad at you, but I could never kill you. Thank you, Doug. That makes me feel safe. I feel safe, too. Yeah, well, I wouldn't take the lock off your door yet, okay? You touch me, you're going to jail. Yeah, I am going to jail. Clarence and I are both going to jail. I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Don't touch me. Mommy's touching me. Don't touch her. Okay. Now he's looking at me. Don't look at her. What do you mean you're going to jail? Mom, you can't believe what happened. Bo's attorney calls me, and he, and he says that Bo wants me to come and visit him before he gets transferred to Penn State. <laughs> you mean the state pen? Yeah. They'll let you do that? Visit a murderer? It's kind of the way the system's set up, you see. Uh, you can go visit them, but they can't come visit you. That's good. Well, Jesus said that when you visit someone in prison, it's just as if you were visiting him. Clarence, uh, why don't we pray uh, before he comes in, all right? Father, we just ask you as uh, we visit Bo today that you would give us your wisdom as to what to say, that uh, in the name of Jesus, your conviction would come upon him and help him to know that you love him. And we, we bind the powers of darkness in Jesus' name. Amen. Make that a double. Hey, uh, Bo. <laughs> Good to have you here. I mean, I mean it's, uh, it's good to be here. Yeah, got a great place. So, I uh, guess you're going to appeal this whole thing, huh? Well, it's, it's an automatic appeal, but it's all in the hands of my lawyers. It's all useless anyway. Useless? It's not useless. Oh, we'll get you out of here. Uh, just give us enough time. It's not hopeless. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is? Well, why, why is it hopeless? I did it. You, uh... You did what? I killed my parents. You, uh, no, huh? no, no, you didn't do it. You didn't do it. You said you didn't do it in court, so you didn't do it. That's right. He, he did it. You, you killed your, your parent. Why, why did you do it, Bo? Uh, are, you, are you telling us that, that all that stuff they said about you in court, being, being a Satan worshiper and sacrificing your parents to the devil, that, that, that's true? Doug, they're going to kill me. I'm going to die. I gave my life to Satan because I thought it would give me power. What out, Doug? Uh, 
What's he want out of uh, Satanism or out of prison? It's, that is the stupidest question I think I've ever heard. Bo, do you want out of prison or out of Satanism? I want out of Satanism. That's what I thought. This, this is real heavy. You, you, you killed your parents. You're, you're a Satanist. We're, we're, we're Christians. You're, you're gonna die. No family is gonna be left. Bo, you, you're really, you're, you're sick. I know it sounds like that. Man, at the time, it made all kinds of sense. You see, when I was a kid, my parents, they were to each other's throats all the time. It was, it was disgusting. We never have any money in this house. We'd have plenty of money if you didn't spend it all. Me? You're the one that bought that lousy boat. You're the one spending all the money on that stupid kid of yours. Yeah, well, he's better company than you are. Oh, yeah, well, if you don't like my company, maybe I'll just leave. Fine, let me pack your bags. Why should I be the one to leave? Why don't you leave? I'm the one that pays the bills on this stupid house and take the kid with you. If I walk out that door, I'm never coming back, you lousy jerk. You disgust me. Stop it! Get away from me! Stop it! Turn that stupid music down! We can't hear ourselves think! If you had half a brain, maybe you could think. Oh, come on. Are you gonna do this or not? Do you realize how much power you have? It's no fun unless you get into your character. You're an 18th level magic user. You've got every spell in that book. If you just pay attention and do it, come on. Are you gonna do it or not? Alright, I'll play. Okay. Alright, you're around the corner. And in the cavern, there's a hydra. You've got three trolls chasing you. What are you going to do? I'll teleport. Okay, fine. You teleport. All right. You make the teleport. You're out of there. But I, I think you're on a plane. Oh, dude, you're in the den of Beelzebub. <laughs> what are you going to do? All right, what are you going to do? You need blood. You got everything you need for the spell. But the book calls for it. It doesn't matter whose, any blood, use your own. No, I'll, I'll get an animal. If you really want her, you'll use your own. o'clock tonight. You up for it? You gonna be there? Hey, I got a worm for biology class. I can't believe we're gonna have to kill him. Oh, we don't have to kill him? No, we could eat him live. Bon appetit. Oh, you ate a live worm. That's <laughs> sick. Oh, sick. Oh. Oh. Yes. They're better dried oh. on the sidewalk That's after it. a good rain. Mm. Oh. Kind of like Bacon bits. <laughs> this is Davis. I, I really wouldn't be too concerned about it. It's just a phase he's going through. He'll, he'll grow out of it. There's hundreds of kids that has rooms just like this.
into my room. This is my stuff. What right do you have to come in here and take my stuff? Get out. Your principal called me today about that stunt that you pulled. Pete, I was only doing this because I love you, and I wish you'd just talk to me. I know you need help, so why don't you just come to church with me on Sunday? I'm going to be busy Sunday. Yeah, with that Linda girl. I don't like her or that group she runs with. The name is Laura. And don't you talk about my friends that way. Besides, Laura's the only one who really loves me. Fine. When you see Laura on Sunday, you can just tell her goodbye because we're moving next week. So start packing. <laughs> Rivers. It's 3 a.m. and if you're up, <laughs> so am I. The next hour of your favorite music is brought to you by Michelob. Remember, the night belongs to Michelob. The night belongs to Satan. <laughs> bestow their infernal power upon me. Open wide the gates of hell and come forth from the abyss to greet me as your brother and friend. Grant me the indulgences of which I speak. Hail Satan! Devoted desires to please the king of the world with more excellent sacrifices ones that by their very actions are asking to be cursed. I call upon the messengers of doom to slash with grim delight this victim I have chosen. Silent is that voiceless bird that feeds upon the brain pulp of them who have tormented me. I Thrust aloft the bifid barb of hell, and on its tines resplendently impaled, my sacrifice through vengeance rests. Hail Satan!
can't believe I did it. You can't trust him. Power, sex, everything he promised me. Now he's taking it all away. He told me to do it. And now I'm betrayed. Bo, Satan is the father of lies. And you believed every one of them. The devil didn't kill your parents. You did. It was your choice. It says that the thief or the devil's come to kill, to steal, and destroy, and he's done that in your life in every area. Yeah, it's funny. It's what I always used to believe about your Jesus. It's easy to see now whose God brings life and whose God brings death, isn't it? But hey, listen. Jesus has still come that you might have life. Yeah, well, he came a little late for me, didn't he? I've been sentenced to death. Listen, from the very beginning, you've been serving a loser. Jesus busted down the gates of hell and ripped off all the devil's power, man. He doesn't have any left. To this day, the name of Jesus is still above the name of Satan. Let me tell you something, man. There's going to come a day when Satan's going to have to get on his knees and say that Jesus is Lord. He'll be forced to do it. And now you've got a choice to make. You can wait until you're forced to do it, or you can, by loving obedience, do it right now. Surrender your life to Jesus. I know it may look like you have nothing to live for right now, but you've got eternity to consider. Eternity. Yo, know, I deserve hell. Yeah, you do. And so does Clarence. And so do I. And so does everyone that's ever lived. We all deserve hell. We've all sinned, Bo. That's why Jesus shed his blood for us. I wouldn't know what to say to Jesus. I've cursed him so many times. Tell, tell him you're sorry, man. Tell him you want a second chance. He loves you. Tell him you'll serve him. Okay. Time's up, son. Let's go. Be afraid. I don't know what to do. You know what to do. The name above every name. Name above every name. Jesus, save me. read you scripture it's found in 2nd Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 11 it says that we are not ignorant of Satan's devices and people as the body of Christ and as Christians we cannot put our heads in the sand somewhere and ignore what the devil's doing we are called light in the earth and we must shine that light into the darkness exposing the darkness and proving to the world how glorious Jesus Christ really is 
You know, Satan pretends to offer so many things to this generation. In fact, we read in, in some of the nine satanic statements found in the satanic Bible, some of the things that he promises. One thing that he says in, in the first one is Satan represents indulgence instead of abstinence. Do what you want, have a good time. Uh, the fourth one says Satan represents kindness to those who deserve it instead of love wasted on ingrates. The eighth statement says Satan represents all of the so-called sins as they all lead to physical, mental, and emotional gratification. So you can do what you want. But there's one young man named Ricky Casso who never experienced that gratification. Ricky was a teenager who took a friend of his from school named Gary, forced him to say, I love Satan, as he gouged his eyes out with a knife and then stabbed him to death. And then as Ricky awaited trial in his own jail cell, he hung himself and committed suicide. That's not gratification, and yet that's what Satan is bringing to people who make a decision to serve him. And I know you don't want to do that, and that's what this program's about. Not just to prevent people from getting involved in darkness and in Satanism, but to help bring people like you that may be watching out of Satanism, out of the occult, out of doing what the devil wants you to do, and begin to do what Jesus wants you to do. Because there's one person who loves you more than anyone in the world, and that is Jesus. And he wants to set you free right now where you are. Some of you may say, well, how do I help someone that's in, involved in Satanism? What do I do? What do I look for? Well, there's some signs that you can look for. There's things that you can recognize to know that someone may be involved. A fascination with witchcraft in books or movies or, or the, the rock music. Uh, sometimes you'll see that Satanists and people involved in witchcraft dress in black. You may find uh, your kid with uh, satanic paraphernalia in his room. Candles and crystals and knives and things like that. Uh, all of these things will point to the fact that someone may be involved. Maybe they're with drawing or rebelling from authority these things if you see them you need to go talk to them and say what's going on in your life we need to communicate with our young people our friends our, our kids you guys that are parents we need to get involved in their life don't ignore what's going on get involved and help them you know the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 verse number 16 that we have been given equipment to overcome the devil and one of the things that we've been given is a shield of faith and the Bible says that the shield of faith can quench all the fiery darts of the devil if you've been involved in Satanism, I want you to know you're serving a loser. You need to serve a winner, Jesus Christ. When you get involved with Jesus, you've got a shield of faith and trust in Him that can quench the darts of wickedness and evil that would come against you. And you can live a life that is more than a conqueror. And there's people watching right now. You need to give your life to Jesus. You're there right now and you say, I need Jesus. I need help. And we want to pray with you. We want to help you. We want to lead you to, lead you to the Savior that can set you free. Bow your head with me right now. Father, I pray. For people that are watching, Lord, that you would set them free by your power. Deliver them out of the clutches of darkness and into the power of your light and your love. Show them how good you are and save them now in Jesus' name. Amen. In the center of the caverns of hell, hidden under layers of evil that had thrived for centuries sets the morbid domain of the prince of the power of the air. Suddenly, a scaly creature disrupts Satan's ghastly existence with an urgent message, and it reads, Code Red Problem, Conference Needed, Disaster Forecasted. With a disgusted annoyance, this general of evil agrees to confer with his chief demon lieutenant. This is the story of that encounter. You may enter. My Lord Satan. Stay your business and make it fast. Sir, we're having problems of cataclysmic proportions. Where? In the East Sector, sir. The damage is vast. Is there something wrong with my abortion clinic? Well, no, sir. That's all fine. We kill 4,000 unborn a day through, uh, shall we say, surgical removal. Good. It's selective breeding. We eliminate human life in the name of convenience. <laughs> like the Nazis and the Jews and with the government's approval. Is there a problem with my pet project television violence? Sir, it's covered from videos to cartoons. By the time a child graduates high school, he's seen 70,000 murders. Is this effective enough? Sir, just watch the news. 
still a disturbance in my false religion. Oh, no, sir. Business is booming. <laughs> Over 40 million are into New Age and Zen. Over 45 million believe in astrology. Looks like we are catching up. Yes, sir. Only 50 million claim to be born again. Is there a problem with business in general? Sir, we're showing tremendous progress. Yeah. Teenage runaways, each year a million or more. Huh. Uh, there's a teen suicide every 90 minutes. And your specialty drunk driving yes. will claim more lives this year than the whole Vietnam War. Well, is there a disturbance in my head? What was that? Sir, that's the reason all these demons are on crutches and wobbling. What's Sir, that's what I've been trying to tell you. What is that? Sir, that is our problem. Only one thing called our warfare of this magnitude. Uh, then, sir, you know what we are dealing with up there. Yes, it's some of those sanctified... Uh, try, blood bought. Saints of God. Actually. Presently on oh, their knees. knees. out, then they do those disgusting charismatic jigs, they quote scriptures like the son of God, and sir, if you don't intervene, we all might wind up in a bunch of pigs, <clears throat> sir, that's the good news, the bad news is the subject of their prayers, the threatens our survival, what they're praying for is causing hemorrhaging in the realms of darkness, <laughs> sir, they're praying. It's hardly controllable. At the issue, she freaked out pouring. Things got dry. Yes, sir. And when the charismatic movement hit, sir, we were jumping out of windows. With all of that, uh, untie my bow tie. Who stole my hand and stuff? Then I'll come in like a flood. But they'll say the Spirit of the Lord will lift up a standard against you. It's written in the Word. Weapons against Sir, no weapon formed against them shall prosper. That's in the Bible, too. Yes, I've heard. I'll hit them with every filthy, lusty fuck you can imagine. But it's written, resist the devil and he must flee. Obviously, the enemy is taking them out more seriously than we are. And that's very dangerous, sir. Especially for me. It's time to watch my final suspicious attack. I'll remind the saints of their past. How they were liars, cheaters, manipulators. Sir, you know what will happen if you remind the saints of their past. And what is that? Sir, they'll just remind you of your future. Save the planet's people with our special guest, Petra. Until then, stay fired up! Hooray! Right.